Hey guys, guess what? I sold my giant TCR. Wait, what? Yep, that's right, it's gone. And I know what some of you guys might be thinking, like, wasn't it such a great bike? And yes, the TCR is a really great bike, and I really like that bike. It has everything I wanted. It's a super snappy, all-rounder road bike, carbon fiber wheels, Ultegra Di2, and dual-sided power meter. Well, if I were to really nitpick, the tire compatibility could be a little bit better due to the hookless rims, but really, that's just me nitpicking. So, it's a really great bike, but honestly, I just wanted something a little bit more special. So I guess you guys can already tell what my new bike is from the thumbnail. So I present to you my Cipollini Bond 2. All right, let's start off with a free hub sound check. <laughs> That's loud. Nice. All right, let's cue the intro. Hey guys, before we start off this video, I would like to give a big shout out to our sponsors, Le Club Espresso Bar. They are a cafe based out in Montreal, but they're also an online retail store. You can check out their website for a great selection of cycling gear, apparel, and coffee. Oh, also, now that summer is here, for those of you guys in Vancouver who are looking for a cycling club, come check out TLD. Uh, we have meet and greet rides every morning, and we go around Stanley Park. It's a lot of fun. If you guys would like more information, check out the link in the description down below. I hope to see you guys there. All right, the Cipollini Bond 2. So this bike here is a size medium, and for reference, I am 175 centimeters tall. So Cipollini bikes are all high-performance oriented sprinting bikes, and they use a technology called TCM, uh, which stands for True Carbon Monocoque. Basically, the, all the frames are made from one single piece of carbon fiber mold. And so this allows the bike to be really stiff and transfer power really well. Now, the Bond 2 here is classified as a comfort bike, and according to uh, Cipollini's website, they describe the bike as comfortable and forgiving at the front, stiff and reactive at the rear. So it, I guess it's kind of like a mix between a race bike and an endurance bike, uh, stiff and reactive race bike at the rear, endurance bike here at the front. So overall, I found this bike really enjoyable to ride, very snappy and fast on the flats. And I'm actually pretty sure it's faster than my TCR as well. So there's this segment, uh, which is a flat 700 meter sprint segment. And with the TCR, I could not get it under one minute. But when riding this bike, I was able to get it in 55 seconds. Obviously it's not scientific and there's a lot of variables that come into play. But overall, I found that this bike is really great for sprinting, handles power really well. Comfort wise, um, I think that both bikes, the TCR and this bike are really comfortable and I'm able to go on long rides with no problems. And some of my friends that test rode this bike said that this bike rolls very smooth and they don't really feel the bumps when riding. The color of this bike is a special 10th anniversary edition colorway. So from afar, it just looks like a standard black bike. But when you bring it under the sunlight and look a bit closer, you can actually see tiny flakes that give off a rainbow sparkle. Now, Cipollini calls this their Spectra Flare pigment, and it's made from little flakes of magnesium and aluminum. So really cool, I really like this color. And under different lighting conditions, it actually gives off uh, different shades of purple and green. So it really just depends on how the light hits it, and it gives off this charmeleon effect. Really cool. All right, next, let's talk about the design of this bike. And I'm really loving the organic, flowy tube shapes of this bike especially here at the rear where the top tube merges in with the uh, rear and the flows into the drop seat state. You can see that the tube shapes flow naturally down here into the rear triangle. Same thing here with the bottom part as well. We have the natural curve into the bottom triangle as well. Here we have the Italian flag as well as the wheel arch area here too. You can see that it curves naturally. So overall, I really like the design of this bike and really these designs, while they look great, they're also functional. Uh, they help with the compliance of the bike as they reduce vibrations. And so with this bike being a sprinter's bike, it's got to have some aerodynamic bits as well. And there is. So here we have a drop seat stay, 
Uh, as you can see, the seat, seat post is aerodynamically shaped and it's pretty thick as well. The tube shapes at fork are all uh, very aerodynamic as well. Putting it all together here with these black wheels and silver Cipollini logo, I think that the bike looks very, very sleek. And especially comparing it to the Giant TCR and Canyon Ultimate, you can see that the design language is very, very different. I think that the TCR and Canyon Ultimate are a bit more modern with straight lines, while the Cipollini is a lot more elegant with organic lines. Let me know which one of you guys like better. Let me know in the comment section below. So the group set on this bike is a mix between Dura Ace and Altegra Di2 with hydraulic disc brakes. So everything on this bike is Dura Ace except for the front derailleur and the rear derailleur. Those two are Altegra. Now the shifting performance on these two are the same, it's just the difference in weight. The crest set here is a 5236 and the rear cassette is an 11 to 30. Uh, no power meter on this one. The brakes here are also Dura Ace. Front is 160 millimeters and the rear is 140 millimeter. And so the difference between the Altegra and Dura Ace ones is the Dura Ace ones have a black coating that help with heat dissipation. Coming along to the wheel set, these are the Mavic Cosmic Pro Carbon SL USTs. These wheels are 45 millimeters deep, uh, setup tubeless, and carbon fiber. So what's cool about this wheel set is that if you can take a look at the whole rim, there's no text on here that says the uh, name of it. It's all here on this one spoke here, and then on the side it has a yellow stripe. These wheels here have an inner width of 19 millimeters, and currently the tires on this bike are the Ycasian UST2s. They are 28 millimeters wide. Now comparing these wheels to the ones on the TCR, these wheels are a little bit wider. Uh, the TCR had SLR ones, which are 17 millimeter internal width and 42 millimeters deep. These wheels are 45 millimeters deep. And so these wheels are also not hookless, so the tire selection is a lot bigger. Um, overall, I found that these wheels are really nice to ride. The 45 millimeters are a great all-rounder rim depth, easy to handle in crosswinds, and they roll great. They're nice and comfy as well. So coming here to the seat post, you can see that the seat post is aerodynamic shaped. And the saddle I have here is the Specialized Roman Evil. I always like this saddle. And so one thing that I wish that they did with the seat post is you can see that the seat post doesn't have the Spectra Flare pigments on it. It's just a generic black carbon fiber one. And from far away, you can't really notice that it doesn't match with the frame. But when you take a close up, you can see that it doesn't match. And so that's just one thing that I wish they, they did. But honestly, from far away, you can't really tell. And over here in front of the seat post, we have a little torque screw. Initially, I thought that this little torque screw was the bolt that holds the uh, seat post clamp. But instead, uh, this torque screw is actually just a cover. So let me unscrew that here for you. Okay. So as you can see, this torque screw just holds the cover for the actual seat clamp, which is a hex screw. So it's kind of annoying that in order to adjust your seat height, you need to have both the torx key and a hex key just to get it. So what I do instead is I just uh, leave it pretty loose and I can just use a hex key and to uh, kind of get it out and then I'll finish the rotation with my thumb. Just Italian things, right? So coming along to the cockpit here, we have the NVSES Aero Handlebar and Stem setup. Here the handlebar is semi-internal cable rooted. You can see that the wires run inside the handlebar, but they don't run inside the stem. Instead, they come out here exposed and into the bike. It's pretty neatly uh, tidied up, so it does. I don't really mind. And it's just only two wires because the DI2 cable and the uh, rear brake cable are housed into one wire. And then the other wire is the uh, front brake cable. So pretty neat. Overall, I find that when I ride, the handlebars cover up the cables anyway, so I don't really notice it. Handlebar and stem are both made out of carbon. The stem is 100 millimeters uh, long. And here the handlebar is a bit more special. They are actually more narrower here at the top and they flare out on the bottom. So Envy does this to help put riders in a more aerodynamic position. I have the smallest size one. So up here at the top is a 35 millimeter width. And here if at the bottom of the drops, it flares down to 40. I'll put a picture here to show the different sizes uh, of the handlebars as well. So when I first started riding this setup, I used to ride it around a 40. And I found that the 35 to be super narrow and I didn't really like it. But I think after three rides or so, I got used to it. And now I really like that um, arrow position. It kind of puts you in a sort of time trial 
position. And when I try riding my friend's bikes with 42 millimeter handlebars, I find myself having uh, it being open too wide. And I really like to have this arrow position. And one small thing that I don't like about these arrow handlebars is the Wahoo mount. Because of the unique shape, while yes, it is arrow and it's comfortable to put your hand around it, you have to use their uh, provided mount. And with this one, this one here is $75 and it doesn't come included with the handlebar system. And so while it is made out of metal and it's nice, but it's an extra $75 that you have to spend on top of the handlebar and stem, which costs a lot of money as well. So I really wish that they should just include the uh, computer mounts, $75. Okay, and now the weight of this bike. And we have it here at 8 kg. So comparing this bike to the TCR, which was 7.65 kg, this bike is slightly heavier. But one thing to note is that this frame is a size 54 while the TCR is a size 52. But if we just take a look at the weight alone, the TCR wins. And so we'll give a point towards the TCR. Uh, handling wise, both these bikes respond really well and are both very snappy and corner really well. The TCR would be more suited for climbing while the Cipollini would be more suited on the flats as it is faster and more aerodynamic. Especially with this aerodynamic cockpit setup, uh, this one definitely wins on the flats. Both these bikes are comfortable to ride over long distances with minimal road vibrations. They both have tubeless setup and so on the comfort wise, it is a tie. Stiffness wise, I definitely think that the Cipollini comes out on top. Uh, when we're if we're talking about stiffness to weight ratio, then possibly the TCR would be better. But um, in, the, in pure stiffness alone, this one is definitely more stiff, okay? Now value wise, the TCR wins hands down. The retail for this frame set alone is $5,600, which is almost the same price as a full TCR bike. So expensive. So at the end of the day, factoring everything, do I think that the Cipollini is worth it over the TCR? And I would say it really depends on how you look at it. Both these bikes are great and they ride really well. So it really just depends on what you want in a bike. The TCR is a great all-rounder performance bike, but if you want something that's a little bit more special, then there's no comparison. I feel very blessed that I'm able to ride these high-end bikes over the course of my cycling journey. I got the chance to ride so many different bikes and each bike has their own unique features and their own highlights. I think that the best bike is the one that you enjoy riding. And this bike here is very special indeed and it's such a blast to ride. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Make sure to smash that like button and hit subscribe for more future content. I'll see you guys next time.